Okay, let's give this a shot. Um, I'm going to start with some real basic stuff and we'll move on from there. So what I want to do is take a look at some brushes first and then I'll show you how to use them. Um, what we have here, these pointed brushes are really important for watercolor, particularly a soft one like this because they, they can get a good point and they can hold a lot of water. This one's a little coarser. Um, the brushes are made out of all different things. Now this one is is probably a synthetic or a squirrel hair brush. Uh, it's scholastic, a Blick scholastic. You can see it's called a round. They're also called brights. And this one is by Kolinsky. This is an expensive one. I don't think I only have one or two of these. And this is a sable. And that they're both out if, if this is squirrel I can't really tell but if so they're both animal hair brushes but you can get them in synthetics too and if you're a vegan you might want to do that now this is a synthetic brush you can see the difference in the bristles it's kind of got one going out that way but once you wet it you can, you can get that to tuck in there and that's also a pointed brush or a bright um, now look at the difference between them and this one, this is a flat because it's flat, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> this is also a flat. Um, and, and these are both synthetic brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of the pointed brushes. Here's, here's another one that we won't be using for watercolor, but just, just for, for fun, that's a, that's a fan brush. And you can use that in, in thicker paints like acrylics and oils to like blend edges and so on. You also want, when you're watercoloring, you want a nice big fluffy kind of messy brush just to put down the water. And I don't seem to have one right here. Um, oh yeah, here I go. Now here's a, a brush that's real soft and you can see it would really hold water. So if I was doing wet on wet, I could put down a bunch of water with that first. And, and I will do that in a minute. But let me show you how these, these pointed brushes work. I'm gonna take this medium sized one. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about paint before I do that. Um, the paints in here came from a tube and my palette's all messy, but you can reuse these colors so I don't, I don't clean them up right away. Um, but these paints came from tubes that look like this and they come from all different types of manufacturers and the manufacturers companies all have different qualities now these are pretty old so they're, they're a little hard inside but even if a paint gets hard inside you can peel that tube away and reuse that paint just like I can reuse the paint here all I have to do is wet it um, if you don't have tubes like this was Liquitex um, here's one a company that's inexpensive that I like called Koi and they're they're nice and soft still I'll, I'll put one out so you can see what it looks like when it's fresh because these are these are dry. So uh, I'm not going to use that pan. I'll put it I'll put it right here. You can see that's a that's a fresh little blob of Prussian blue by Koi. Um, basically, the more expensive the paint, the more pigment is in the paint. But you can find a happy medium. Like Koi is not terribly expensive, but it's a but it's a good paint. Um, Utrecht is, is good. Um, some of the, the lesser brands are not so good. You'll, you'll figure that out as you go. And then if you're not, whoops, if you're not using, excuse my hands, if you're not using, uh, tube paints, you might want to use paints that are already put into a pan. This is a Japanese brand called, I don't know, you tell me, but, but they're good. They're quite good, and I enjoy these too. But I'm going to go back to my messy palette. Okay. What you do to reactivate these paints is take your brush and see how nice it holds water. It's real wet. Just drop some wherever you want to reactivate paint. I just put some on that purple. And I'll put some over here on some of these. Just drop some on there and it'll make it nice and wet again and soft. It'll soften it right up. Um, watercolor is all about the water. So 
you can control how much water you put on the paints. You can control how much water you allow to stay in the paints and you can take away water if you choose to. All right, so some of those are activated. I'm gonna put this up here and I'm hoping this all is visible. I'll have to check it since this is the first time I'm doing it. This is gonna to have to move. All right, with my pointy brush, I'm going to wet the brush first so that it's ready to hold some water. And you can keep a rag nearby like I do or a paper towel to, to wipe your brush on or to wipe up mistakes. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint on my brush and show you how this brush works. Now, the nice thing about a pointed brush is that you can use it to make a fine line or a wide line. So if I work with the side of the brush, I can make a wider line like this, okay? I can get a little more paint on there if I want to, and I can go from the side of the brush and lift up on the brush and it'll become a pointy line. So like this, and then lift, lift up. I can go right in with my point and get a very fine line. I can start with my point and then push down and make the line wider. And you notice I'm always pulling the brush. You never push against the bristles because that'll make them fan out and that'll that'll damage your brush. And you, you, you'll get favorite brushes. You'll get brushes that you, you really wanna keep nice. Here's a darker paint, darker blue, okay? So what I'm doing right now is wet on dry. I kind of lost my pigment there at the end. Let's get a little bit more. I'll come in just with the width of the brush pushing down. And as I go, I'm going to lift up real slowly. See? A real fine line that way. Or sideways. All right. So this is wet on dry and just playing with your brush point. Now, to do wet on wet, I'm going to go to another page for that. Well, no, I'll, I'll work with, with what I have here instead of wasting the paper. Um, I'll talk about paper in a little while, too, because you have some choices you can make there as well. So let me get some water. Wet on wet, which is a lot of fun. You just put a little water down. Okay, like that. I have it right in this, this area here. Then you go and get, get a nice loaded brush full of paint. Let's get some of this nice hot red. You notice I wash my brushes in between each color so I don't drag color from one pan to another. So I'm going to come down here to my wet and I'm going to just drop it in there. And you see how it fans out in that wet paint? And you can control that a little bit if you want to. You don't have to, but you can by tipping, tipping your paper. You see what's going on there? It'll move one way or the other. Maybe if you have a lot, it'll drip. You can make it drip. You can take a nice loaded brush full of paint. I'll put a little across the top here. And you can hold it like that. I hope you can still see it. And then put a little more water there and watch what happens. There it goes. Join with the other paints. Just put a drop of water there. All right. And then if you want to have real fun, uh-oh, my palette closed. You don't need to have a palette like this, by the way. You can use just a, a white plate and keep them separate on the plate. Now I'm, I'm rinsing my brush, and I'm going to grab a little more paint. And this is still wet, so I can go in here and, let's see, red and blue make purple. You know that from your color mixing experiences. So I can take a little bit of blue and drop it in there and see what happens with that red paint where they could meet each other. Okay, now it's, the red's starting to dry already. There's a trick you can do with this too that I'll teach you later with, with salt where you can make it look really cool. So, all right. See, I'm adding a little water to that. If you, here's a, here's a neat trick. If you have paint on your paper that you don't want to be on your paper, you can take your brush and then wet it first and then dry it out so it's like a sponge. Now this has to happen when the paper is still, when the paint is still wet, but you can make your, your brush like a sponge and you can go in there and suck it up. Look at that. Get almost all of it up. 
And then if you want to keep doing that, keep drying your brush. Okay, pretty nifty, huh? Okay, I'm going to check my video, see if it's working, and come back with a second um, piece in a minute.